Greetings, fellow Americans. My name is Mary O'Corn Jimenez. I am a candidate for the President of the United States of America with the Free Energy Party. I am proud to represent the first political party in world history with a free energy platform. There are so very many problems that we are going to solve. With your help, the Free Energy Party is ushering in a bright new era that will end the dangers of nuclear radioactivity and will signal the end of pollution and a halt to conquest and war over oil. What if? What if it is easy to feed the world? High oil prices mean high food prices. The world's population need not go hungry. The last five recessions in the U.S. were all preceded by a rise in oil prices, and there is a direct connection between the price of oil and the rate of unemployment. Through war, environmental destruction, and high prices, oil appears to be strangling the world. But knowing that we dumped so much fuel into the sky, it begins to look like what is really taking place is a desperate power grab. The supply is not really related to the price. After taking over the oil fields of Iraq and Libya, the prices of oil did not go down. They went up. Over 90% of all the chemicals that we use are made from oil. These chemicals are then used to make the drugs for big pharma and the chemicals for big agriculture. All these monopolies have a patent it or kill it philosophy and are run by some of the same people as if it is really one big company. Predatory DOE oil policies are seen in the USDA and the FDA. Year after year, the FDA has been virtually at war against vitamins, from which there are virtually no deaths. The American Journal of Medicine reports that poisoning from prescription drugs is now the second leading cause of unintentional injury death in the U.S. This democracy cries out for sustainable cures for diseases, not band-aid patches with side effects. This democracy also demands sustainable agriculture. The Monsanto Terminator gene is the opposite of sustainability. It sterilizes the plant so that it will not grow or sustain, forcing you to have to go buy more new seeds. The Monsanto seeds have been called suicide seeds. Ironically, these seeds have also caused farmers to commit suicide around the world as they are driven out of business. The worldwide permaculture movement is about organic gardening for sustainable agriculture. They do not see the USDA and the Monsanto Terminator gene as agriculture at all, but the end of agriculture. Because of the bad reputation of the Terminator gene, Monsanto is now trying to introduce the zombie gene? Who picks these names anyway? The zombie gene is supposed to stop crops from reproducing until you put certain Monsanto pesticides on them. What if it is not so crazy when people say that the consumption of these seeds could mean that you yourself might not be able to reproduce one day unless you drink bug spray or some such chemical? On the other hand, organic farming is 100% sustainable. Even the bee population is undisturbed in organic farms. Terminators and zombie technology is not sustainable agriculture. What if? What if bear is putting a chemical on Monsanto seeds made from nicotine that kills bees. What if the Germans and the French just outlawed this chemical? The German Federal Agriculture Institute stated, It can unequivocally be concluded that poisoning of the bees is due to the rub-off of the pesticide ingredient clothionidin from corn seeds. What if Monsanto sues seed cleaners who try to wash the bee-killing poison off? What if American agriculture needs the bees to pollinate or we will lose much of our crops? What if the world needs bees? But what if the FDA and the USDA and the EPA were run by the same companies that make the poison? What if the bees and the birds, which are nature's pollinators, are unwanted competition in the chemical company takeover and partial eradication of nature? We need a political party that would make it illegal for big business to buy out the government only to betray the people's interests. The USDA was supposed to protect our farming and our food supply. Across the board, this democracy has asked for labeling of Monsanto's genetically modified foods, GMOs. Why have we been refused GMO labeling? Political parties that first start up have to go through an ethics committee, which wants them to report the money that they raise. Yet once in office, there is no ethics committee to stop the revolving door between government and monopoly. Where is an ethics committee to stop the suicide of farmers from suicide seeds? or to stop the purposeful extinction of the Earth's pollinators. Mussolini said that fascism is when the government becomes partners with big business. 
We refuse to allow fascism to come to America, and the Free Energy Party is here with hope and promise for a return to free enterprise in America. By moving into the future with free energy, we will end the hijacking of the American government by predatory monopolies. There is only one winner in a game of monopoly. That is why laws exist, the Clayton Act and the Sherman Act, antitrust laws, to supposedly protect us from monopoly. U.S. law expressly forbids restraint of trade. To block the free market introduction of energy in this day and time is especially an immoral and repugnant act. A new day has come. It is illegal for the oil companies to restrain free energy. Free energy will not hurt oil companies in the overall. They will learn to branch into many productive and needed areas. The oil companies currently engage in a wide range of money-making enterprises. Even after the in introduction of free energy, they will have lots of free energy opportunities in the future. Free energy will not threaten the continued manufacture of lubricating oil, many pharmaceuticals, plastics, and many agricultural products. As the market introduces free energy technology, the public will still keep all the good things which we receive from the oil companies. But if an area of business needs to be improved upon for the sake of all mankind, we declare that a free market allows progress. Why point out Monsanto? Their chemicals come from the oil companies, all right, but are they an example of unchecked monopoly? Are they engaged in illegal restraint of trade? Is stopping seeds from working for poor farmers a restraint? Has it led to a large number of farmer suicides? What if? What if a Supreme Court justice who used to work for Monsanto was allowed to rule in a case to give Monsanto the right to patent and take over life and pretend that their company is nature's new god? What if the USDA made a deal with Monsanto and for the first time in history a government agency charged with protecting agriculture became a joint owner in a monstrance contrivance called the Terminator Seed Patent? designed to destroy agriculture and nature as we know it. The genetic engineering of plants to produce sterile seeds has been widely condemned as a dangerous and morally offensive application of agricultural biotechnology. Over 1.4 billion people depend on farm-saved seeds. To make plants where they do not produce seeds is an attack on nature and farming as we have known it for millions of years. What if what if the same lawyer that helped the U.S. Department of Agriculture to become partners with Monsanto was a former head of Monsanto? What if this former head of Monsanto was next appointed by our president to be head of the FDA? What if there are 12 appointees in top USDA, FDA, and EPA positions that moved over from Monsanto? What if our Secretary of State used to work for Monsanto? What if the fox is guarding the hen house and you are considered one of the hens? Where is the ethics committee when we need them to save the world from foods made by a poison manufacturing company that lead to death in an industry which makes money on sickness and disease? The Free Energy Party will make the revolving door illegal and bring campaign ethics into the elected offices of government. The Free Energy Party is not against Democrats or the Republicans. We are for free energy and cures for diseases because these world improvement innovations exist and the people demand them and they need to be supplied to a deserving public by an open system of free market enterprise. Over 40 countries support and require GMO labeling. What about here in the land of the free? A full 91% of Americans want GMO labeling. That's 89% of Republicans who want GMO labeling. 93% of Democrats want GMO labeling. What if the Democrats nor the Republicans are to blame? Monsanto employees have been elected to high-level government jobs during both Democratic and Republican administrations, even though the average Democrat and the average Republican doesn't approve. Even Dr. Oz did a program on GMO labeling. There could not be more unanimous opposition. You would think that we need to just say no to this drug addiction to predatory monopoly capitalism and say yes to free market enterprise. But if you heard the statistics that I just told you, you begin to realize that we are already saying no and that it is not an effective method of social chains to just be against something. Sometimes being against something can make it even worse, like fanning a fire. It is time to be for free energy. It is time to quit fighting the past and to embrace the future.